On this final Sunday of Advent, we hear again the beautiful account of Gabriel's visit to Mary to announce the coming of the Messiah. I think we can all relate to Mary in this story, not because an angel calls her full of grace, but rather because she's greatly troubled at this extraordinary visit. Gabriel treats Mary very gently. Do not be afraid, he tells her, and explains not only what God is asking of her, but also how God will make it come to pass if she agrees. Mary joins a long line of God's people who have heard these reassuring words. Don't be afraid, Abraham, to enter into the covenant with God. Don't be afraid, Isaac, for God will multiply your descendants. Don't be afraid, Jacob, to go to Egypt, for there God will make you a great nation. Moses, Samuel, Elijah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all are told not to fear. It's interesting, though, that God is not offering to take away their fear, but rather promising that even in the midst of their fear, God will be with them. Each one must take a leap of faith and act. Abraham enters into the covenant. Isaac faces a king to find a hospitable place for his family. Jacob leaves the land of his ancestors to go to Egypt. Moses confronts Pharaoh and leads Jacob's descendants to the promised land. The prophets deliver God's message in the face of threats. And Mary agrees to become the mother of the Messiah. We've all heard these days of Advent described as a time of waiting. But we do not wait for the Messiah as our ancestors did. He has already become one of us. But if you're like me, you sometimes wish that God would send Jesus again to heal all that is wrong with our broken world. Poverty, illness, war, human trafficking, homelessness, and other evils cry out for a solution. Yet our response is often, oh, I could never do that. I'm not the leader type. I don't know enough about that. I can't get involved. We wait for someone else who is more qualified, more charismatic, more creative, unafraid. But think about this. What if God is the one waiting, waiting for us to redeem the world? If Jesus is to be present in our world, to heal and comfort and face the evils of our day, we must be his face and hands and feet and voice. God still says, don't be afraid, I will be with you. God waits for our answer as Gabriel waited for Mary's. Our world is waiting. Our neighbors are waiting. Our parents, spouses, children, even our enemies are waiting. Will we allow them to wait? Or will we follow Mary's example, trust God, and take a leap of faith even in the midst of our fear? so Jesus can be born today.